Hello everyone, glad to be here at View London. Today my topic is new ways to view, how the new tools and the techniques affect the way we view and build applications. My name is Anthony Fu and I'm a View and Vit Coding mem member. I'm also a creator of Slide, View Use, VDesk and other open source projects. I'm a fanatic open sourcer, currently working at Nux Labs. My GitHub handle is ANTFU, you can also find me on Twitter. Before I start, I want to thank all my sponsors to supporting my work. If you find my work useful, you can also sponsor me at GitHub. It would mean a lot to me. So let's talk about today's topic, new ways to view. So let's talk about the view two way first. On the left, we have a view single file component. In this component, we have template tag and a script tab. In script tab, we will need to import the things we want. For example, import view from view, and then uh, export the default the component's objects using view.extend, and then need to, we'll need to register our components, make things, and then declare data and the method. The problem here is that we are having too much SCADI folding code for each component, and also the the, the mixings are kind of limited for the extensibilities to reuse uh, our code and also having some problem of TypeScript support. To solve this, in Vue 3, we introduced a new style of API called Composition API. Let's do a quick comparison here. On the left, we have the Options API, and on the right, we have the new Composition API. As you can see, in Options API, we used to have multiple properties for the object, for example, data, method, create, and so on. But in Composition API, we have only a single function called setup. Lifecycle functions are now providing as hooks, so, like, so you can use it in, inside of our set, st setup functions. So we have everything inside of the single context. This way, we can have a better TypeScript support. But other than that, the most importantly, we can have a better composability. For example, we have a we have a component with the setup functions. If you if you want, if we want to use reuse this logic, we can sim simply copy over it and have having it inside of inside the new files and wrapping with the new with the functions. In this case, we call it usedark. So then we can refactor our components to you to import the use dark functions and reuse it the, the components will be behave at exactly the same as before but but we can now re reuse our functions in, in inside of other components and have a better better organizations of our, our logic so let's talk about the script setup syntax as you can see even with the new composition api we are having many scaffolding codes in our components for example, in this case, the highlight lines are the things we actually care about, but we will need to write the rest in order to have view understand this. In the new script setup syntax, we can have them all declare at top level. And the variables, functions, components inside of the script setup are directly available inside of the components. This is initially introduced in 3.2. View 3.1 as an exper experimental feature and now is stable in View 3.2. The other new feature is the vbind syntax inside the style tag. In the past, if we want to have a dynamic styling components, we will need to first declare, declare some reactivity, reactivity data inside of the data and then we, we, we kind of bind the, the data inside of the template. But now with vbind, we can have we can have the binding inside of the our style tag, so we can have better organized of the uh, the templates and the style. So finally, let's talk about the new default tooling vit. So what is vit? I bet many of you have already heard about that. But in case you don't, let's have a quick introduction. So first, we used to have a bundlers like Webpack and Roa. The problem of of them are they are usually designed with designed for production build first and need to bundle the entire projects in order to start the dev server. It also involves with complex configurations and the hard, hard module replacements get slower as the project grows. So now we have a dev servers, for example a snowpack and a vid. So in dev servers we use we are designed specifically for web development. We leverage the browser's native ESM support and 
and we don't we don't need to bundle the code anymore. The server start immediately immediately and we only transpile the modules on demand. In these ways, we also have uh, instance uh, hard, part, hard module replacements and much more possibilities. So what do Vue 3 and the Vite bring to us? Not only the better performance and the better developer experience, but also the new ways to view. So let's have a look at how we use view components. So first, we need to import and name it and then register the components so that we can use it in the template. So the problem here is that it, it makes our code quite verbose and the name of each component are repeat at, at least four times. Not, on the, not only this slow down our development, but also renaming components becomes quite frustrating. So with the new script setup syntax, we'll, we no longer need to register the components anymore. But the thing is that the name is still repeated three times. So what if, what if we can make it better? Introduce components auto-importing through Vit plugin components. Since, we're, since we already know the name of each component, we can actually directly mapping them to use it in the templates. So how we did that, we use compile we use compile times comp components resolving for components on the, on the source slash components directory. The usage looks like the global registrations, but the difference from them is that we, with the auto importing, we can provide better code splittings and we, we can no longer need to, to do the manual registration. Even more, we can, skip, we can skip the runtime resolving to, to make the performance even better. Introducing components auto importing through Vite plugin components. Since we already know the file names of each component, we can actually make the binding and that them um, used usable directly inside the templates. As you can see, that's all we that's all we need. So how does this work? So first we use uh, compile time components resolving for the components on the source slash components directory. The usage looks like the comp global components, but the difference from them is that we, with the auto-importing, auto -importing, we, we have better code splitting support, and also there is no manual registration need. Even more, we can, with this approach, we can skip the runtime resolving and make the performance even better. So let's break down to see how the compilation works. If you copy over this code into our online playgrounds, sfc.vuejs.org, you can see it being compiled by the SFC compiler into the following code. Our three component usage is being compiled into this three statement. The resolve com components function is an internal helper for Vue to resolve the components from the current component instance. So what we can do in Vite to make it make the auto importing working? So we can write a very simple Vite plugin here. So first we use enforce to ensure the plugin runs after Vue's comp compilation. And then we use the transform hook to modify the code. In the transform hook, we filter out the files and that are not Vue. And finally, we replace all the resolve component usage to the real component import. If you are interested, interested in it, uh, you can refer to the Vite documentation for more. And as a result, we remove the usage of resolve components and make them directly import. And, that, and with that, the auto-importing is working. The other thing worth mentioning is that since, v, since Vite is a dev server, we can have more imagination here. So with the Vite plugin inspect, you can, you can now inspect the relationship between modules and how the modules being transformed for each plugin. This could be really useful for debugging uh, plugins or understand how Vite, how Vite works internally. So one thing was mentioning is that since Vite is a dev server, we can have more imagination here. With the Vite plugin inspect, you can now have a UI to inspect the intermediate state of each transformation for each modules, and also re the relationship between modules. This could be really useful for plugin authors to debug their plugins and also beginners to 
understand better of how weight works internally. So get back to auto-importing. Similar to the components auto-importing, we can even make the API auto-importing possible. By scanning the usage of each functions, uh, we can we can now in, injecting import read from view when when there is not presented. In this way, we can have our components even more clear. Let's do a quick summary of the Vit ecosystem. First, we have Vit plugin components for components auto importing, Vit plugin auto import for API auto importing, Vit plugin icons for on demand icon solutions, Vit plugin inspect to inspect the intermediate state of Vit, Vit plugin pages for Nux or Next.js like file based routing. Vit plugin Windy CSS, which is more like an on demand tailwind but with much faster compilation and HMR. Vit plugin Node, which brings Vit HMR for back end Node.js app. Vit plugin Style imports to in for the auto for on demand components in style importing and much more. You can you can find more on the on our official awesome Vit list. So Vit has inspired many plugins and better ways to improve our developer experience. But that's not limited to Vit. Let's bring them to your existing projects today. Introducing Unplugging, which is one of the projects that I'm working working on in Nux Labs. Unplugging is a universal plugin interface web for Webpack, Vit, Rollup, and more. So that you can you can write once for your plugins and runs on many major tools and framework. So let's take a look at of how unplugin work. So on the left we have our traditional uh, Vit plugins. To make it to make it as an unplugin, we can simply wrap in with it with a create unplugin function, and then we can assess the Vit plugins through unplugin dot Vit raw plugin. Uh, with unplugging dot rollup and the webpack plugin through unplugging dot webpack. So with that, we can actually move many vid plugins to unplugins. So we so we move vid plugin components to unplugging vid view components, vid components auto import to unplugging auto import, and during this this refactoring, we also made it possible for view react Svelte, Valina or any framework you like. And also Vit plugin icons is now unplugin icons. With that you can you can take any combination of the following list to whatever you want. So what about Vue 2? I guess some of you are still stuck on Vue 2 due to the I support or the code migration process. But don't worry, we, we have got you covered. For Vue 2, we provide polyfills for the code functionality. For Composition API, we provide at view slash Composition API package to bring the Composition API back to your view app. For Square Setup and the Ref Sugar, we provide unplugging view to Square Setup package. Note this is also an unplugging, which means it will work on view CLI, Nux2, or your custom Webpack setup. For, v for Vit support, we have Vit, Vit plugin view to and Nux Vit, which bring the Nux, uh, which bring the Vit experience to your Nux two apps, while having the great ecosystem of Nux. And for the de developer enhancement, the the previous mentioned plugins are also support View two out of box. To sum up, this is what you could get today. No matter if if you are on View two or or three, Nux two, View CLI, or Vit. You can get rid of the components registrations. You can use the latest uh, script setup syntax and also the view composition API. We also provide some starter template for you to grab them quickly. VDS is one of the most popular Vit starter templates that provide you the best view experience. VDS Nux that bring the VDS experience on Nux too. We also have VDS for web extensions. To try it out, you can run the following command in your machine. Finally, a little spoiler that Nux3 will have many of these features mentioned today, built-in directly that you can, that you can use out of box. 
So that's all for today. Slides can be found on my site antfu.me. Thank you.